Hey, hey, Internet, Swag here, and welcome back to part 3 of CB2 Basics. We will pick back up where the last one left off, so if you haven't already, please check the previous tutorials in the series, link in the description. Last time around we made a setup that would update a text gadget with the text that we put into the prompt of a prompt local player chip. This time around we want to notify a player directly, but for that we're going to be tackling something that is very important to working with circuits version 2, which is synchronized versus local. Now this is going to be a bit confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to work with one of the most powerful tools CV2 has to offer. So without further ado, let's get on it. So to start off with, I'm really just going to nab the button and prompt local player chip from our previous build. There we go. And in circuits v2, there is a show notification chip. Now we would be able to show ourselves a notification by wiring that up to here, change our prompt title a little bit, and now we can press the button, click the thing, and it gives us a message. The problem with this, however, is that it is still local. So if there are other players in the room, they will not get the message. To make it a bit more obvious, what I'm talking about here is a little visual that I prepared. The way to think about CV2 in contrast to CV1 is to imagine that every player within the room has their own copy of the CV2 setup. Buttons and trigger volumes when activated by a single player are oftentimes local. In this case, when player 1 presses a button, it will send an execution only from their version of CV2 to the prompt local player chip. They will get a message and be asked to type out something. Once they are done, the prompt local player chip will continue this execution, but because everything so far has been local, it will only be player number one that gets the notification. To remedy this and send a notification to all players, we once more go through the same steps. Player presses a button, sends an execution to the prompt local player, they get a message, allows them to type a thing, but instead of sending it directly to a show notification chip, this execution and text value gets sent to an event sender that is told to send the execution and text data to all event receivers. So instead of only going one way, this data gets shared through the event with everyone's event receiver. Now, execution and text value will continue as normal, but this time it will be synchronized across everyone's system, which means that once it makes it to the end, everybody will get their notification. So this, henceforth, is the incorrect setup. Now to make the correct setup, we will need ourselves one event definition. The event definition chip is to an event what the role chip is to a role. By itself, it does nothing, but once you have an event receiver and an event sender that are wired onto your event definition, you'll be able to see where it will take you. Our event definition shall be called synchronized text submit. And because we want our event to carry a string value, we will make a property that is called text of the type that is string. And we will add that property. And when we do so, you will see that the event definition will gain itself text input that is purple to signify it is a string value. Now if we configure 
our event receiver, go to chip settings and choose our event, scroll all the way down to our latest, which is, well, still called event definition, but you will see that once we select it, it will update to synchronized text. Same for the event sender. That is now synchronized text. And the target for our event sender will be all. Is instead of wiring our show notification straight into the prompt local player chip. Once the prompt has been completed by the player, upload the response into the event sender that is going to send it to all the players in the room. And then our event receiver will receive that execution and string value so it can show the notification not only to the local player that typed the prompt but to all the players in the room with the help of our event. Now I can press this button and it will show me a notification but there is really no use in showing this setup with only a single person so let's get some help involved. To get some help in demonstrating I've got Alexa. Hello. Alexa does circuits and does the puzzle class and uh, helps with the circuit think tank and she's going to be showing us what it means for our setup to be local versus synchronized. Alright, I have my streaming camera off so I can see notifications. If you would please tell us what you are doing as you're pressing the buttons and then we will see demonstrated that one of these setups shows notifications to us and the other one doesn't. Okay, so I'm gonna click on, on this button and I'm gonna type something that anyone should see. So I just typed the word C and I see that. And we got no notification whatsoever. So let's press this and I'm gonna type C again and press OK. Hey, and we see C. Excellent. As you can see, the incorrect setup and correct setup are named appropriately. And that will be all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching this video, and once you have a solid grasp on Synced versus Local, you will be well on your way to mastering CV2. If you had trouble following along with this video, or you can't wait till the next one to learn more, please visit recroom.com slash creative to sign up for classes and workshops or recroom.com slash cv2 for more info regarding circuits version 2. But for now, I hope you use your newfound knowledge wisely, and to see you in the next one. Bye!